Hi, I'm David Hicks, and I want to give you a brief history of CO2 at CMG. So who is CMG? Well, CMG is a reservoir simulation software uh, research and development company based in Calgary, Canada. We've been around for 40 years now, and we're well known for our thermal, chemical, and advanced modeling process capabilities including, in particular, CO2, which is the topic of my uh, conversation today. This is our head office in, in Calgary, uh, in a nice summer's day. And in this office, we have in the basement uh, quite an extensive computing centre. And this is where our support staff and our consulting staff from around the world can access quite high levels of compute power to do uh, large or extensive studies that they don't have the local compute power to do maybe in, in our offices. At the top of the building are our training rooms, and this is a training room uh, from prior to the COVID times where we could do all these things in person. But these sorts of training courses are, are now done virtually in, in the same sort of environment that you do in your, your home office or at, at home rather than in person in our, our data centers in, in Canada. So, let's take a look at CO2. Now, CO2 itself started on the basis that CO2 EOR was quite a useful process and it resulted in the production of more oil. And indeed, this graph taken from the IEA shows the number of projects globally across time. So you've got time in the x-axis, number of projects in the y-axis. You can see that over the years, it's built up and built up. Now, it has been around for a long time and in, really it was back in 1952 when it all sort of started with the first patent for CO2 EOR being placed. And then in 1964 there was the first field test conducted and then in 1972 we had the first commercial CO2 EOR project in West Texas. And that's why on the graph on the right you see we're starting in the early 1970s. So we've been going for about 50 years with CO2 EOR and learning about that process for an extensive uh, amount of time. And what's CO2 EOR all about? Well, CO2 EOR is really about generating miscibility, creating single phase flow. If you have multi-phase flow in a reservoir, you typically will leave behind some residual amount of oil as the phase that's pushing the oil through the reservoir um, essentially leaves stuff behind. When we have a single phase flow, um, we don't really leave anything behind. We're essentially pushing one substance with the same substance. So you're essentially leaving nothing behind because eventually you will just have CO2 left and all of the oil itself will be swept through. There's no multi-phase flow effects. It's all single phase flow. So we end up reducing um, the residual oil to effectively zero if it's a perfect miscible flood. And we can also, even with the, the accounts of uh, CO2 being a gas, we can also sweep different parts of the reservoir if we had started off, say, sweeping the reservoir with water. And where there's sufficient CO2 supply is actually quite a, a popular EOR technique because it is very uh, efficient. And CMG's GEM Reservoir Simulator uh, has been around for oh, uh, 40 years or so now and it provides all the required functionality above for that CO2 EOR and more and it's been providing that effectively since about the 1990s so 30 or so years we've been modeling C CO2 EOR capabilities. Now more uh, more towards the current point in time, um, CO2 EOR is being conducted, but nowadays people are thinking about, okay, I don't want to just increase the amount of oil I'm producing, I want to actually have less CO2. And in fact, I want to get rid of a lot more CO2 than I'd actually need in some EOR project. So we're now looking at the concept of CO2 sequestration rather than EOR. And CMG has been involved in carbon capture or CO2 sequestration for maybe not as long as we have been with EOR, but it, certainly for quite an extensive uh, amount of time, over 20 years now. 
It all started back in Japan in Kyoto in 1998 and this led to the Japan Oil Engineering and CMG um, having a JIP or a joint research project for the Research Institute of Technology of the Earth in Japan and this ran from January 2001 until April 2005 and this produced a product that we called at the time Gen GHG. The GHG was for greenhouse gas. And this is where we added an extensive range of features to our GEM reservoir simulator. So GEM is our compositional equation of state-based reservoir simulator. And we added a lot of features for saline aquifer disposal. This was added to GEM. And GEM itself is multi-phase, is compositional, full geochemistry, and the geochemistry was added as part of this saline aquifer disposal project geomechanics and temperature, so it covers all the bases for CO2 sequestration in saline aquifers as well as your standard uh, compositional type reservoir simulation. And then for about 10 years from the start of that project to, uh, in 2000 to about 2010, saline aquifer disposal was quite a hot topic. There was probably over 100 papers published using GEM for this type of process during those 10 years. And the sort of processes that GEM was being used to model was, okay, what forms and what times, how long uh, is that CO2 going to be stored in my reservoir? Uh, what form is it going to be stored in and how much am I going to get rid of if I inject it into these uh, aquifers? And some forms are extremely safe on, for long-term storage, so mineral trapping. If I convert CO2 into calcium carbonate, like these uh, white cliffs over here, it's pretty stable. It's gonna stay there for millions of years, potentially, not likely to leak anywhere. And then you've got sort of short-term storage where CO2 might be stored in the gaseous form. And if you've got gaseous CO2 in a, in a trapping structure, you need to understand the structure itself, the seal integrity, and where that CO2 is going to go within the structure. And then other forms of trapping the CO2 is CO2 soluble in water or in the brines that you might be storing in. And if the actual aquifer itself is thick enough, you can actually get these convection cycles in a, in a large thick aquifer where the water itself, as it as it dissolves, the, the gaseous CO2 becomes heavier and descends through the column, bringing fresh water to the top of the structure to contact the CO2. And then over many, many years, that CO2 will gradually dissolve away and be taken in the water phase. And we end up with less of the short-term gas phase sitting at the top of our structure. And then when people were looking at, okay, maybe uh, are there other ways I can trap the CO2 away from my seal, the top structure, through the, the, the porous system itself? Then other approaches were looked at, trying to invoke essentially hysteresis trapping. So injecting water and gas at the same time or injecting them in a cyclic fashion such that the CO2 itself gets trapped as a residual phase sitting in the pores rather than essentially migrating through the reservoir to the top of the structure and sitting there in the gaseous phase. So all of these types of mechanism were built into GEM to analyze how these things would work, over what time frames they would work, and could I be secure in trapping the CO2 over, over the, the, the time frames I needed to consider. So CMG, since Kyoto, has been involved in carbon capture so that's over 20 years now. And it was mainly focused on saline aquifer disposal at the time. However, as I said, between 2000 and 2010, there was a lot of activity, but after, as we approached 2010 and after 2010, things seemed to go very quiet on the CO2 sequestration front. Then after a hiatus of about six or seven years, things started to change again. And this was really caused by the event of the Paris Agreement coming into force at the end of 2016. And you can actually see this in the chart that I, again I took from the IEA website. You can see with the x-axis being uh, calendar years and the, the y-axis being number of projects. 
uh, the blue sort of lines are operating and under construction and the green types of uh, blocks are development of, of projects and you can see the, the number of projects developed scaled off quite drastically after about 2010, 2011 and got to a sort of minimum around 2016. And then where the Paris Agreement took place, you see a, a rapid takeoff again of the, these projects. So a, a much renewed interest in, in CO2 sequestration as a whole, as we're quite well aware of today. So after Paris, companies were looking at two main types of disposal. It wasn't just deep, deep saline aquifers anymore, although that still forms quite a large part of the the investigation that people are involved in these days, but also looking at depleted oil and gas reservoirs. Uh, for example, looking at the North Sea, how can I use some of the existing pipe infrastructure there, some of the platforms, can I delay decommissioning and can I just generate a, a CO2 sequestration uh, environment that takes a lot of advantage of, of what's already existing. So as we saw with deep saline aquifers, it was all about CO2 solubility, long-term mineralization, gas trapping, seal geomechanics, this type of thing. And then with depleted oil and gas reservoirs, all of these things typically are offshore because politics tends to prevent onshore CO2 disposal. Nobody wants a giant CO2 disposal project sitting underneath their house. So these things tend to be mainly offshore. And when you're dealing with offshore, you're, you're typically dealing in seafloor temperatures of around 10 degrees centigrade. Depleted oil and gas reservoirs are typically, when people are looking at them, maybe down to about 400 psi. And then when you start looking at these temperatures and pressures in respect to the CO2 critical point and the CO2 phase behavior diagram that you can see on the right here, we tend to start operating in the red circle, all around the critical point on the, on the liquid gas transition. So this makes things a bit more complicated for the reservoir simulator. And, and indeed, there's been a lot of uh, advances in GEM to try to understand how to model the phase behavior around the, these difficult uh, CO2 behavior areas. Now, the other thing that's driving interest in, in CO2 and, and particularly pure CO2 type streams is this whole idea of blue hydrogen where we can convert our methane resource uh, into a hydrogen resource. But in doing such, uh, going from methane to hydrogen, we create a lot of CO2. But the great thing is instead of the CO2 being dispersed in lots of cars and engines and power plants all over the place, the CO2 is highly concentrated at a large production site for hydrogen, which means it's a lot easier to dispose of because we've got large volumes that are in a, in a concentrated area and we can pipe that into some uh, storage facility offshore. All of these types of analysis of how we're going to store the, the CO2, how we're going to maybe pipe the CO2, and the, the, the types of phase behavior and physical effects in the reservoir that we might see are all tend to be captured or can be modeled via reservoir simulation. And for CMG, this is our, our GEM reservoir simulator. And for saline aquifers, and, and really it was all about how much we can store, how long is that going to stay there? And for maybe depleted oil and gas reservoirs, we sort of know the volume because we've already produced from it. Uh, we want to understand how it's going to be stored there, but we also want to understand what the risks of injecting into it are. are if I start injecting and I, and I have a CO2 contract, which I'm bound to be able to dispose of a certain amount of CO2 into my storage facility, am I going to meet that contract or am I going to start injecting and find that certain effects uh, kill my injectivity uh, very quickly or even over a certain period of time? And so the reservoir simulation environment allows detailed de-risking and understanding on the controls of well injectivity as well as the more usual storage scenarios. So there's a lot of items I have put on the, the, the display here, but just to give you an idea, it's, it's reservoir heterogeneity effects, how does pressure, temperature and fluid fronts propagate through the storage site itself. Temperature, especially in depleted oil and gas reservoirs, is a big issue. So rapid cooling caused by CO2 phase change, you've got to remember that CO2 is actually a refrigerant type gas. You've got dual Thompson cooling, you've got risk of hydrate formations, you can dehydrate the near wellbore environment, 
So there's a lot of stuff related to temperature and CO2 phase behavior effects that you need to understand, and you can model this in the GEM Reservoir Simulator. Geomechanics, not just the cat rock seal, but maybe the cement around my well completion, uh, maybe the, the rock around my well completion, am I going to actually get enhanced permeability because I, I induce some local fracturing? Is that local fracturing going to go up through the, the cemented completion and actually provide a pathway through, through my upper layers to surface, which is quite risky? So geomechanics is quite an important topic. Geochemistry is also related to, okay, am I going to be able to store stuff via minerals? Is my CO2 cap going to gradually mineralize over time? Is my injectivity going to change as I dry out my near well bore through the CO2 injection? And if I shut in my well, how is that uh, well itself? How long is it going to take for water to encroach back in my well system? So there's a whole load of fluid flow issues that we need to capture and model in the simulator and understand how that's going to affect my project. And the overall aim is to de-risk any project that we might be involved in. So in summary, I hope that I've given you an idea that CMG has been in the forefront of CO2 reservoir modeling for over 20 years, in particular with CO2 sequestration. So we've got CO2 EOR, saline aquifer disposal and depleted reservoir disposal. Please feel free to come and contact us later, come and talk to us. We have our website, we have our offices around the world. We're all very happy to chat to you about what we're doing and how we're doing it in the CO2 world. So thank you very much for your time.